Hello! I told you I'm back and I've been meaning to get to this one for a little bit. I've just been trying to find the time to really talk about this because I think this one might last a little bit. As you can see, I'm going to talk about Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Volume 1. And of course, I do actually have this big bastard. <laughs> Call it big simply because, you know, like it's freaking huge. And it's going to pair right next to my hero academia here. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Like sits like I'm gonna have to put it in a different spot where my manga sits simply because it's not gonna be able to go in where the rest of it does. So I have been hearing so many mixed feelings about Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt. Those who are wondering, like I've already talked about Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. It's what got me into Gundam originally. It's what really helped to spur on more of my anime love. So, I eventually did learn about Mobile Suit Gundam, the original, very first ever one. When I was younger, I was a little turned off from it simply because the art style is old. I mean, let's just admit, 1979, it's like, it's, it's aged better than it has any right to. It still doesn't look good. Let's just admit that. It still is a fair bit ugly. It looks at 79 from 1979. That being said, it's created such an interesting story. I mean, I've watched all of Zeta Gundam. Zeta Gundam is fantastic. I haven't watched ZZ simply because it just finally got localized for us English speakers, and it's a real pain to ask to even get it with dub or not dub subbed. It's a pain. I don't know why. Char's counterattack is fucking fantastic. Unicorn Gundam can be great and very pompous at times. And then there is even some of the stuff talking about, you know, this. Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt. This is one of the newer original stories that have been created for, you know, Mobile Suit Gundam. The original Mobile Suit Gundam in the One Year War storyline. Oh, and the one other thing I have to touch upon... 08th MS team. Fucking fantastic. Those who have not watched 08th MS team, you have a an anime that legitimately still holds up in terms of how its visuals are, and you have incredibly interesting characters, and it's not a long set. It's also not like Stardust Memory where you're just bashing yourself in the head with the characters being kind of dumb. <laughs> and I will say War in the Pocket Originally as a kid, I was a little about it, but now that I've watched this, it's actually a lot better than I, re I remembered. It's, though it's a very mecha light story, but that's okay. It doesn't need to be very heavy with the mecha. And speaking of which, I'm going to make a separate review about one other Mobile Suit Gun thing that's been coming up. But, I need to talk about Thunderbolt. Those who are wondering if I have watched the anime. No, I have not watched the anime yet, or actually it's an OVA. I I want to read the manga first. I just want to see what is interesting enough about this. Is it worth my time? Should I even care about the anime if I didn't like the manga? And I have to say, I do like the manga. It's not fantastic. Let me put let me just stop that right away. Those who are wondering about the actual like visuals here on the front, it is like that throughout different parts of it. It's super fucking stylized. Oh, there's a, uh, I just realized there's a sticker in the middle of one of my things here. <laughs> that, you know, the fight sequences are very, like, the Zaku's here, the, not Zeongs, ah, can't, crap, I forgot what they're called. Uh, Jogooks, I think is how it's pronounced, or Gogook, however you pronounce it. It's got G and G's in weird spots. The Doms, everything, the gyms, all these different things, they don't look exactly like we would think. And hell, even at the beginning here, this thing that's on the very front, people are like, oh, it's totally the mobile, you know, it's the Gundam Thunderbolt. No, no, it's actually called the Full Armor Gundam. It's different. It's very different in terms of its mecha designs. You can obviously see that there was something that the designer or the artist was trying to change enough to make it their own. 
this is both for the good and for the worse. Where it's good is in some of those action sequences. Uh, short to explain what's happening, this takes place in the Thunderbolt sector, where a colony used to be, got destroyed during battle, and the last group of this these colonists, they band up with the Federation and they decide to take back their sector. Well, obviously, Ziong, they set up these snipers. And you learn why they are set up as snipers. One, it's pretty much an empty range. And it would be better to do that because they can set up a mobile suit in these, like, hidden little spots where debris is and all that. And one of the main one, his name is Daryl Lawrence. I would just let you know, I had to look him up because I remember the Federation guy because it pretty much has two different points of view, Federation and Zeon. Uh... Federation, Daryl Lorenz is, well, I'm sorry, Federation, Zeon, Daryl Lorenz is forgettable, except for one major thing, and that is that he is, uh, he's missing a limb, he's missing, I think he's missing both his legs, and in fact, it kind of talks about originally the Zeon attack on Earth, and how it's like, you gotta realize, like, even though the big thing is always mobile suits and spaceships and all this, there obviously had to be troops on the ground. Like, there had to actually be foot soldiers. It's something that another manga kind of gets in, or not another manga, another anime got into that was like, oh, yeah, there would be foot soldiers. I mean, you can't take over something with just, you know, mobile suits. It's not going to work that way. Now, that, him being, you know, for lack of a better term, he's an amputee, with him missing limbs, you would think, oh, he's not going to really be able to work as well. He's actually given, you know, robotic limbs. And with that, he's able to work his mobile suit. Mind you, there are problems simply because of how the mobile suit uh, interfaces with him in different ways. That it can also spark up memories. It's sort of, those who are wondering, sort of like the uh, uh, Psychocom units that the later Gundam, pretty much ever fucking Gundam had had later on after, you know, Zeta Gundam. Here, though, it's more just interfacing with him to use his memories. It tries to use positive, more negative. It can actually affect it in a bad way, of course. And that's the most you get with him. He likes music as well, which you can tell. is like, okay, so this is really, really probably meant to eventually be an OVA. And because of that, some of the music stuff that he kind of talks about, it it does not help that they're really big into jazz and blues. It's like, oh, you're that guy. That guy who will not shut up about jazz or blues or anything. Wow. But yeah, they kind of, he kind of talks about it, and that's the gist of his personality. Then you get E.O. Fleming. I think that's how I pronounce I.O. Or it might be I.O. Fleming. He is exactly the kind of guy you would think the Federation would have. And not only that, but he is the kind of guy that the Federation would probably eventually want to have in the Titans program later on after, you know, 0083. <laughs> he is a bastard. <laughs> He's arrogant, he's insufferably arrogant at that point. He's self-sure to the point to where he almost purposely puts other people in danger. Because of that, though, you do learn a little bit more about him. Like you learn, he was also part of the group that, you know, lost so many, you know, lost so many friends and family and He's pretty much taken it to, you know, the extreme in the fact that he's severed himself off from emotionally from everybody. And he just does whatever the fuck he feels like. He's, of course, an ace pilot, and he pretty much destroys most of Daryl's unit. And Daryl and him pretty much have a sparring match, though neither one is able to gain the foot, gain a, you know, foothold over the other. And that's the novel. That is the reason why it has good parts. Like I said, the action's really good. Some of the dialogue in it is really good. The art can 
it can be, you know, a little dependent upon your own taste. I personally don't have as many issues with it. It is sometimes almost overly artistic, like there's too many scratch marks. Like, all right, cool with the hash hatches, you know, let's stop that. <laughs> but hey, I understand the artist wants to make their mark, f you know, felt, and you do feel it, but it doesn't feel like it completely, you lose everything. Like, you still understand, hey, that is a, you know, that's a Zaku, that is a Dom, that is Jogu, that is a type of Gundam, that is a Jamish. <laughs> You know, so none of that's bad. The biggest issue I can say is just that in all reality, if you have not read any of the Mobile Suit Gundam stories, you're probably going to need to at least read a wiki page or something over it. I will say that it does almost stand on some. Almost, though. There is a few bits that probably need some explaining, like why this fight is a little as as bad as it is what exactly kind of happened to make the federation and zeon really hate her as much as they really do and that's kind of about it it's not that it's the worst thing ever it's just it's not as standalone as it really wants to be it does have a lot of qualities that almost make it standalone and also i will say just as a person who has to buy these because i do buy them myself Fifteen dollars for this, and it's no, it's no longer than any of the stuff that's you know, it's not longer than a Sailor Moon comic. It's not longer than my Hero Academia comic. And it's a little harder to justify it at times. It's not that it's bad. It's just that it's like okay, so can we pare down the price of these just a smidge? It almost feels like it's. It's overpriced simply because it's Mobile Suit Gundam. Because a lot of Mobile Suit Gundam stuff is over normal prices. It's very hard to find Mobile Suit Gundam stuff at just regular price. Hell, I have two that if y'all ever pick them up, y'all should. Gundam Lost War Chronicles. I found them and they were just like 10 bucks a piece. I'm like, alright, cool, I'll get them. And they were actually quietly fantastic. But beyond that, like even Gundam Wing Endless Waltz Glory for Losers, I think I found said its title, right? They're thirteen dollars or yeah, they're twelve dollars a piece. Hell, uh the mobile suit Gundam Origin the big hardbacks, mind you they are hardbacks and it is redoing the entire thing, are thirty dollars. It's hard to always justify that. And this being fifteen is even harder to swallow. I just, I want them to notice, like, hey, we love us some Gundams, but here's the reason why your Gundam stuff doesn't sell as well as y'all want it to. Because y'all overprice the shit out of it. But hey, that's the only real negative I can say, is just that I wish it was lower in price. Just because I am a thrifty guy, and also I am a guy who tries to, you know... Not pointlessly just throw money and stuff. Cause it's hard to always say, hey, read this, and you're having to go on my word that, hey, you need to spend 15 bucks on it. I will say, do make sure you probably know a little about Mobile Suit Gundam before going into it. You don't need to be as versed in it as, you know, many other people. At least something would be good. It's just so that way you're not completely lost. Because if you go into this blind, I don't think you're going to get it or like it. So, hey... That's Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt. I'm going to pick up Volume 2 soon. I just I need to find the time to be able to you know, get this. That's the other thing. It's going to be a pain ass to find these. So until then, everybody, though, I will see y'all with a review on an anime here in just a moment. In fact, I'm probably going to include, say, Sunday Fun Day, simply because it's something I've been wanting to give my opinions about for a bit. So until then, everybody, I'll see y'all later. So bye-bye.